When I first started using TikTok, it was just like people dancing or like joke videos. That's what were most of my videos until later. I just felt isolated from all my friends, my family. TikTok was kind of just there, and then it would just get even lonelier and lonelier. I had no idea that it would make me end up here. Let's talk about TikTok. Anxiety, depression, and eating disorders. The social media giant conceals the dangers of its app, especially to children. To think what these companies are doing, what they know they're doing, and the harms that are being caused in the real world are horrific, horrific. The families of two little girls say TikTok caused their deaths. TikTok's algorithm keeps young people scrolling. Little is known about the potential mental health impacts it may have. They have operated under the belief that they're immune. TikTok has repeatedly chosen the path for more control, more surveillance, and more manipulation. And they've pulled the wool over all of our eyes. We will keep safety, particularly for teenagers, as a top priority for us. TikTok's algorithm has one main goal. You need to watch even more videos. If you can control the algorithm, then you can also control the mental health of a user. And if you cannot control the algorithm, TikTok needs to be shut down. I'm Olivia Carvel. I am a reporter on Bloomberg's investigations team. I've been writing about the intersection of technology companies and child safety. I've been reporting on TikTok for about a year now, largely writing about safety policies that the app has. But what I really wanted to understand was the actual impact on the users themselves. So we know that TikTok has been a punching bag in Silicon Valley over the last few years. There's a lot of concern about this app. Almost every day if you check Google, something new pops up. I'm seeing a lot of headlines around data privacy, around the security risks of the app. And another thing that comes up time and time again in these headlines is child safety concerns. What is the mental health impact of using an app like TikTok? I want to try and answer that question. I want to understand, is TikTok safe for kids? And what are some of the consequences of tumbling into a rabbit hole on this app? What, baby? What's going on? All right, we need coats for you too. Here, bub. Bub, 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 bub. You got it? All right, let's go. Out the front door, loves. What drew me to this work is that it needs to be done. I'll see you later. I'll be back. I'll be right back. Our children are dying. They're suffering. They're developing harmful dependencies on these products. They're experiencing unprecedented rates of depression, anxiety, suicide, and these products need to change. Give me a kiss. Oh, love you. Laura Marquez-Garrett is an attorney based with the Social Media Victims Law Centre. It's a Seattle-based law firm which is essentially trying to raise the question of liability. Should these big technology companies be held liable for the harms that they are causing to children? Hello, come on in. Good to see you. So what's been happening lately? It has not been happening lately, same. Same old, same old. Just busy and a lot of families, a lot of work. We have over 1,400 clients right now. And doing That's crazy because yeah. the center's only been around for, what, 18 months? If even, yeah. And do you have families reaching out to you directly to I, talk? I do. You can see this pattern where you have a kid, often a kid that is doing just fine, and you introduce that social media element and things just go downhill. 
The TikTok cases tend to be the dependencies that these kids develop where they just feel they can't live without it. You know, you will have a teenager whose For You page is just flooded with suicide content, advocating violence against others. We see that. Disordered eating is a big one. It will be massive amounts of video targeted on a vulnerability that the technology has identified. How do you actually visualize the landscape of social media harm? What does it look like in your mind? It's huge. It's the designs, it's the marketing, it's the programming. These products are tools whereby if a child gets an account, these companies are using these tools to target these children. I mean, we see kids all the time who will tell us, and, and you can see it for the ones that are dead, mm. you can see it in their data from the ones that are here, they will tell us, like, I wasn't looking for this stuff. I can't tell you, I can't tell you like the way we feel when a new client comes through and their child has passed away recently. And it's not, I know we're not responsible, but there's this sense of like, we have to do this. We have to get this done because it's happening every day. And I will tell you that the outcomes where some of these children survive can be just as bad. Hmm. These are children whose childhood is gone. TikTok was already pre-downloaded on my first phone. All my friends had TikToks accounts and they were making videos and it was just some, seemed like something that would be fun. I think my first like recollection of like the shift in my For You page was really just like, I started getting like healthy recipes you should try. And then it turned into how to make your legs thinner. And then it turned into what I eat in a day with these girls that I thought I should look like. Of course it made me feel like I was eating too much and like what my body should look like and just that I wasn't enough because I didn't look like these other girls or I wasn't doing what they said I should be doing. I do not remember searching any of that stuff at all and then it was there. I found the little icon for the For You page. It made me visibly shake. I stood in the kitchen for less than 30 seconds and probably saw 50 images. It was disordered eating, body dysmorphia, binging, showing pictures of what it looked like to be anorexic, self-harm. It was all over her feed. We thought we were telling her the right things and we thought we were doing the right things. But unfortunately, I did not know that I was working against the forces coming through her phone. I mean, to have your child's 13th birthday party on a Sunday and Monday to see your child hospitalized for a life-threatening disease was heart-wrenching. And for us, that was our rock bottom as a family. We had our first official appointment with a medical provider and first a nursing student came in to take her heart rate. And I saw the pause and I saw them do the heart rate again. And then I saw the nurse come in and I saw the same thing. In the afternoon, I saw her phone call come across. The doctor said that Katie needs to be hospitalized. And my husband asked the question of, well, how soon do we need to get her there? And they said, you need to admit her now. You need to go pick her up from school. So we drove to school to pick Katie up and um, called the school and Katie was released. And then my husband and I looked at each other and we thought, what if she doesn't come home? And what if she dies there? And so we called my son out and we asked my son to come out too so we could explain it to him. And then Katie got in the car and where did you think you were going? Florida. She thought we were surprising the kids with the trip to Florida. And she looked in the back and saw that there was only one suitcase and knew that she was getting admitted. Katie's a pretty remarkable young woman. She feels a sense of empowerment by talking about her experience. And she really feels like TikTok is to blame here. She's filing a lawsuit, arguing that the platform is liable for what happened to her. 
we're aware of many cases where children like Katie have tumbled down this eating disordered rabbit hole and she is not alone in her experience. I just would want to ask them like why they directly sent me these videos especially of my age and that I was a girl like why why me? If Katie had a coach or a teacher that was encouraging these behaviors, they would be fired. <laughs> we wouldn't allow somebody to stand in front of children and give them this information. The fact that a company has an algorithm that was purposeful in sending harmful content to a child, that's irresponsible. The big mystery with TikTok is its algorithm. What is powering this product? The concern is no one really knows. This is a document that I'm looking at. It's called TikTok Algo 101. It was actually written internally and effectively tries to explain to the product guys or the human moderators how it works. There is a, an equation here that they have outlined trying to explain to these teams what the algorithm is doing, what it's learning off these users to deliver you an endless stream of content that it thinks you want to see. That's TikTok's magic source here. But through reading this, what I've come to understand is it doesn't really tell us anything. This has led to some chaotic, frustrating situations for insiders. I think one of the most telling things we actually have in this 18 page document is a line on the front page that says, our ultimate goal is to increase daily active users. So even if inside the company, their trust and safety teams, which are set up to try and protect kids, are encouraging them to develop, create, enhance safety measures, the company's ultimate objective is actually working against that. I'm uh, Charles, I'm 20 years old, I'm from Germany, I ended up working for TikTok at the age of 18. Most of the time is when I worked at TikTok, I did workshops, so I had the chance to really interact with many advertisers in the German-speaking region. I saw that my For You feed tremendously changed in a time of a week or two. Every time I entered a workshop, I was in need to switch to a second TikTok account because my personal TikTok account was so dark and sad that I don't want to really share any of this content. What I saw in my feed is more and more depressional, suicide and self-harmful content came on. This is not somebody saying, I want to kill myself. It's maybe somebody sitting in a dark room crying and a text saying, I don't want to live anymore. You really get affected by that quite hard. TikTok collects a lot of data when it comes down to the videos that you consume and all the metrics that you give to TikTok by consuming more and more content on the platform. The most important factor for the algorithm clearly is watch time, but it also comes down to a topic called retention, which is based on the interactions that you give to a certain video and to a certain channel. See, I, would never actually take I personally made an experiment where I opened up a new TikTok account and tried to check on how much time would it take for me to open up an account that's just filled with sad quotes and it took me 17 minutes to have a pure negative feed. And you really see that within the first 15 to 20 minutes that you interact with the algorithm, you will decide what is going to be distributed to your own feed in the next years on TikTok. I had a presentation in November of 2020 where I had the opportunity to comment on Gen Z behavior, what's happening on TikTok and what is going on the wrong direction. 
I put on two videos that were kind of the worst and most sad content that I have been seeing on my personal For You feed um, just days ago. I believe that at the end for them the takeaway was yeah, this is on our platform, okay, cool, but why should we do anything? We have so much work to do. There was no proactive engagement in that topic. Nobody even replied to my concerns. TikTok is aware of content that is around suicide, depression, eat disorder and mental health issues. And they want to address that internally, but only under the circumstance that you don't spend less time on the platform if this would be taken down. So I'm going to open the TikTok app on my phone and the first thing I see is the For You feed. This is an endless stream of content that I can scroll through and watch videos. The interesting thing about the For You feed is every single TikTok user, and now there's more than a billion around the world, see a different thing on their For You feed. It is hyper-personalized to what the algorithm thinks you want to see and what it thinks will keep you on the app for as long as possible. In the early days of social media, one of the concerns about these products was this concept of filter bubbles. And this is where we have scenarios of teenagers and children being pulled into a virtual reality and being sent content about certain topics that they don't fully understand or grasp. I want to understand what that feels like for a teenager to be sent never-ending content about a topic that has the ability to change their mindset, to change the way they feel. Chase Nasca was a young man living in New York, two-parent household, siblings, did well in school, incredible athlete. You know, he hugs and kisses his mom goodbye. I'm, I'm going to the gym, mom rides his bike to the gym. Normal routine, nothing out of the usual. He works out, he leaves the gym, and as he's riding his bike home, he stops at an unfenced area of some train tracks. And he texts his friend and said, I'm tired, I can't do this anymore. And he's gone. His parents, after the fact, trying to piece things together and figure out what happened, how did this happen, are looking through his cell phone and they come across the TikTok For You page. And what they see on the TikTok For You page is horrific. I've looked through, I mean, over a hundred of these videos. He had bookmarked several thousand, which is somewhat unusual. A lot of kids don't do that. But as a result, it's created a scenario where we have a lot of what he was watching up until the day of his death. So you really have his digital fingerprint right. here. What he was looking at, what he was liking, right. what he was favoriting. Right. What he was searching too. So we have, and in fact, let me pull this out and I can give you some examples. In January, you've got bench press tips, kitchen hacks, motivational speech, gym motivation, Batman. That same day, this is what TikTok chooses for him. Find what makes you happy. I don't want to live. Sleeping is not enough. I need to die. So this is what TikTok's algorithm is sending to Chase after he searches for a motivational speech. Correct. This is a common one that he gets several times before he takes his life, which is how he took his life. I'm done. Oh, wow. Um, here's some violence. Kill her, kill her now. So a lot of what he starts getting are, and, I, and it's possible if we went in, we'd find he'd been through a breakup. Right. Um, and he starts getting images that are advocating, like one is you're a terrible person, which is why she's not with you. Um, two is kill her, kill I her I mean, now. a teenager who's just gone through a right. breakup seeing this, I mean, I have no idea what kind of impact that's gonna have on you. Mm. All right. Shall we look at what is on his account today? 
I downloaded TikTok on this device yesterday, mm -hmm. and then I put in the username and the passcode, and it opened right into his account. 69,000. I'm going to kill myself on camera. Oh, wow. I wake up every morning racked with anxiety and nerves, and it starts immediately. You're a piece of shit. You're no good. Where are the silly dancing videos? Where are the kits and the dog dress-up clips? I hate my life. I hate it. But I'm depressed. But my life is miserable. I hate my life. It's just so hard to wrap your head around the fact that what we were watching was specifically sent to a 16-year-old boy who took his own life. Right. This is this is the rabbit hole. This is the rabbit hole. This is TikTok. I mean, we've just watched a few minutes, and it's been nonstop. You should just die. You're worthless. You're nothing. You're sad. No one loves you. You're unlovable. These these companies collect tens of thousands of data points. I mean, you're telling me that that they know what car you drive, what your education level is, what you shopped for on Sunday afternoon, but they don't know that they're causing harm. This is insane. Mm. This is this is killing American children. It was a really weird experience. You know, I've been reporting for months now, trying to understand what is a filter bubble? What does it feel like to be inside one? And I just saw it. It's hard to find the words to explain it because you can talk to families, you can talk to lawyers, you can talk to academics, you can talk to researchers, but to witness it and to watch what that 16-year-old boy was sent before he died, what his account is still being sent now, you know, it really feels like, you know, these products are failing these kids. I want to share with other people that this is what TikTok was sending me. The easier thing would have been to not say anything, but I don't think that's the right thing. The right thing is to say something so that this doesn't happen to any other girls and they don't have to go through what I'm going through right now. Somebody needs to do it and just the feeling of empowerment it gives me, I want to create the change that needs to be created. There are a lot of issues on TikTok, yes. Do I still like the app and the content? Yes. It's just about the mechanism behind it. If you have this content in your feed, you're not alone. Really make sure that you spend more time in real life. And to everybody who wants to work in tech, I think we need to get a little bit less brainwashed by what the company tells us and get back to how we personally experience social media. What scares you the most? Any sort of possibility that we can't create change. I don't know what kind of a world we live in where this continues now that people are finally starting to realize what these companies are doing. That scares me the most. It's the possibility that we cannot force these companies to make these products safer for kids. They know the product's harmful, they know it's hurting kids, and they're still distributing it to virtually every child that they can get into their hands.